everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Ad Project Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Josh Shellard from Ad Advance, and today I am joined by Mr. Matt Wickland. Matt, how are you doing today? I don't know if it's the time of day or day of week, but I'm doing great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, we'll go with that. I like it. <laughs> We haven't really got into the topic, so like that joke probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't really flow, but I like it. I like it. Um, yep. So today, as Matt was going with his lead in, <laughs> uh, one item that we really want to talk about that we've been digging into quite a bit lately is different trends for um, like day of week or hourly. Um, so we just had this big launch from Amazon um, called Amazon Marketing Stream, which has given us a ton more data that we can now implement within our systems and track a lot of really cool stuff. Um, so we're really excited about that and just talking through them kind of what Amazon Marketing Stream is, and then trends we're seeing, and then really how we can use this overall. Um, So Matt, maybe I can kick it over to you to kind of start off with, like, can you just give a general overview? Like, what is Amazon Marketing Stream? Yeah, totally. So Amazon Marketing Stream is a way of getting much more timely advertising results. So Previously, metrics were always reported on a per day basis, and then there was always this lag of you know 12 plus hours where the data isn't finalized, even into yesterday. So it was always tricky looking at same day metrics or even yesterday metrics and trying to get an idea of where your campaigns are at in terms of spends and what performance looks like over the course of the, of the day. So Stream changes all of that, and this is a massive rollout and gives advertisers an immense amount of really powerful data to help plan campaigns and manage campaigns. So at a high level, uh, stream the the data feed, uh, it gives you performance metrics, traffic, uh, conversions, sales, you know, the, the majority of the core metrics that we'd report on are used for campaign management at the keyword level. Uh, And then you can roll that up to the campaign level and get hourly metrics over the course of the day, nearly real time. Yeah, yeah. And this was always a key gap that we had overall, because like you were saying, the the traditional metrics that we have, they're all based on daily metrics. Um, And, you know, many times delayed a bit too. And so it takes a little bit for that data to get posted. And then you just get the full day metrics that you really can't segment out. And so now with this new data source, we've been able to really break down what the data or the shopping trends look like throughout the day. Um, Before, we've always had our day of week bidding system because we can segment and see different shopping patterns, like comparing a Monday to a Saturday, and we can optimize bids for that. But now we can get to the point where we can really segment by the hour and by the day. Um, And there's some pretty dramatic shopping differences between those different periods. So I don't know, I guess I can jump into that. Yeah, totally. Um, So, I mean, some quick updates or overviews that we've seen. So as we've been tracking this data and breaking it down, um, like we said, there's some pretty dramatic differences between different times of the day that we're showing ads. Um, And so I'll just kind of walk through the day. Um, And we've been doing a few different posts on this. So make sure that you connect with me or Ad Advance on LinkedIn. Um, You can see these graphs, but I'll just kind of walk through the general trends. Um, Overall, in in the very early morning, so 1 a.m., 2 a.m., and when I'm saying these times will be all Eastern times, um, we're not getting too much traffic, and we're getting a ton of browsers, so not a very high-intent shopping audience. And this is really kind of the trough period of the day um, where we're not seeing many conversions. And so if we look at advertising, probably not a great time to be advertising overall. Um, And then as we proceed and we get closer to the morning time, um, at about 6 a.m. Eastern time is where we really start to see conversion rate spike. Um, And when we're talking about conversion rate, it's really buyer intent. So if somebody clicks on the ad, what's the probability that that's going to turn into an eventual purchase? Um, Ads at 6 a.m. versus 2 a.m. have a much higher likelihood to turn into a purchase than the 2 a.m. ads. 
Um, and then as we get into 6 a.m., it really starts to peak. And then the major peak is actually from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Um, so this is like prime time for showing our advertisements. This is when people are most likely, once they see an ad or click on an ad, um, to lead to a purchase. Um, and then throughout the day, starting at about 10 a.m. Eastern, um, it starts to slowly go down. Um, if we look at like 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., this is all going to be above average um, purchase intent. And then 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. is always it's going to be below average. And so, again, the trend is kind of like, all right, peaks at like starts at 6 a.m., peaks at 8 to 10 a.m., and then starts going down um, till about 6 p.m. It's above average. And then it keeps dwindling down until it gets to about that 2 a.m. Eastern time mark where it kind of hits that trough and then repeats the cycle. Um, and so major difference between the trough and the peak, I mean, it's almost a three X or a three times higher conversion rate between those two different periods. Yeah. It's um, amazing. So a lot of cool information, but Matt, why do we care about that or how can we utilize it? Sure. Yeah. So this isn't just for reporting. It's not just about understanding like the customer journey and when people are most likely to shop and convert. Um, it has major implications for how we can manage advertising campaigns in, in accounts. So if we can spend when you're at, when those clicks are far more likely to convert into orders, um, we can stretch advertising budgets further and we can get in front of that highest intent audience. Um, so it goes back to like the placement podcast episodes that we've done and the placement posts that we've done. On social, we hit that topic pretty frequently because those placement multipliers are so important and you want to take advantage of the conversion rate disparities between each advertising placement. So kind of a similar theme for Amazon marketing stream. Uh, if we have three times higher purchase intent in the early morning out in, in the morning hours compared to like the overnight hours, that means that we can afford to pay three times as much. Uh, during that period and achieve the same exact return. Sure. So like in terms of budget timing, we want to get in front of an audience that is going to lead to the most revenue, right? Especially relative to cost per click, that helps your returns, it helps your bottom line, and it boosts your top line at the same time. Yep. Yep, exactly. And so, I mean, this is kind of the equivalent of like, like Matt was saying, so different placements, they can perform differently. And so we're willing to bid more on the top performing placements because it's more likely to lead to that eventual sale. Um, it's the same optimization that we do on the target side. So for keywords or product targets, let's bid more on those keywords or product targets that are more likely to lead to a sale. Um, it's the same thing that we've done for day of week. And so we're willing to bid a little bit more on a Monday versus a Saturday because Mondays tend to convert better than Saturdays. And so we can bid more and let's own those placements on Mondays when they're most likely to convert. And then let's bid a little bit less. Maybe some of our competitors can spend some more on Saturday. Uh, we'll spend some more on Monday. Overall, we're going to come out ahead because we've got a higher percentage, higher probability to actually turn that into a sale. And so now when we're able to break apart the data by hourly and just with the stark differences that we have before, we just had to look at an average throughout the day. Um, now we can start bidding like continuously on for these different periods. And during that golden hour between 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Eastern time, we can bid a ton more than we can um, or than we may want to in the early morning hours. So let's let our competitors win those top placements at 2 a.m. when people are much less likely to actually purchase. And then let's bid more than they do. Um, we're going to see a great return from that. We're going to boost sales from that. Um, and our competitors are going to be pretty confused on, on why they're seeing these results drop off because um, their ads are winning the placements when people are least likely to convert. And so um, really cool trends that, that we're seeing um, in terms of hour of the day. Uh, another piece I just wanted to hit on quick too is just going through like day of week. Um, so day of week we're currently optimizing for um, and there are some differences in shopping patterns just like we see for the hour of the day. They're definitely not as 
that it's not as huge as like, you know, three X times. Um, but if we look at like, we've mentioned a couple times, like earlier in the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, um, these tend to convert better than later in the week, um, or during the weekend, the weekend, especially. So in the weekend, um, we tend to see some pretty solid traffic, especially on Sunday. Uh, but conversion rates are lower. And so I think people are just browsing around more. And then once they get into the actual work week, now people are higher intent shoppers as they go. And so we constantly see these different conversion rate changes. Um, we're using our machine learning models to optimize for that and take these repeatable patterns into account. Um, but overall, you know, it's just some trends that we see, but in terms of like, you know, between 2 a.m. and 8 a.m., we were seeing a 3x difference. Here, we're only seeing a couple percentage differences between the different days just because they're averaged out more. If we break it down on a market level, it can be higher for, say, like business products or different things like that. Um, but overall, definitely not as stark, but another item that we should be taking into account because it's another spot where we can get more of a competitive ad advantage on how we're implementing our, our bids. Yeah, that's the huge piece. Uh, so we've always had metrics by day, obviously, but most advertisers aren't looking at conversion trends by day of week and then adjusting their bids based on expected conversion rates um, because there isn't a built-in system within Amazon to allow you to do that. So you, it requires software and development time and resources, which not everybody has access to. Even large agencies, uh, you know, the majority don't use like day of week conversion rate prediction um, tech. Sure. Um, so what that means is it creates a competitive advantage. You are doing something that your competition isn't. They're using blended average performance over say a 30 day period or some fixed time frame, without taking all of these day to day disparities into account. And so that allows you to get more favorable pricing allows you to, you know, when it matters or yeah, it, it just gives you an edge over your competition because you're doing something that they're not doing sure. and yeah, taking advantage of like conversion rate disparities and cost per click disparities over these different time frames. Yeah. And we've seen really good results with day of week bidding. And like you said, it's not near the, the level of variance conversion reason and isn't near the level of variance for, um, like weekday, day of week, trends as it is for hourly trends like that 3x disparity between peak um between 8 to 8 and 10 and then those early morning hours yeah is huge like that could mean you've got a 60% a cost for a keyword at 2 a.m. and you have a 20% a cost at um or roughly just throwing numbers out there yeah. uh yeah at 8 to 10 a.m. yeah so like Going beyond bid optimization, this could open the door to keywords that produce too high of an ACoS. They weren't viable for you previously. They didn't meet your required returns. Sure. If we bid those selectively during the right hours with the right bids, we could potentially have a viable keyword now and meet your required returns um, sure. by just you know targeting it during peak hours. So some people will say, well, okay, what you guys are just talking about is day parting. Um, so we've been able to do a day party and we've tested day partying for quite a while. So kind of walk through what day partying looked like before Amazon marketing stream and why this is different. Sure. Yeah. So there were two issues, main issues with day partying previous to Amazon marketing stream. First, I, I know where you're going with this, like the structural complexities with yeah. that, which is, it's really ugly. Um, but the first is just data reliability. Um, Amazon didn't have a system like stream previously. And so even though you could parse out campaigns into these different hour blocks or ad groups into these different hour blocks, it doesn't mean that the metrics assigned to those campaigns and ad groups for those specific periods are accurate because it's a per day system. Like they, they'll post throughout the day, but it's not necessarily tied to the correct hour. Sure. And so that can lead to inaccuracies in the, the bidding process. Stream changes that entirely. Like these are accurate hourly metrics. Um, and then going past like that that issue with day part, the previous issue with day parting, um, the structure was just super messy. Like the way, because we only get uh, metrics by day 
or we only previously got metrics by day, you'd have to structure your campaigns. You'd have to create a separate campaign for each period uh, and then turn them off when that period expires, turn it on when it begins. And so you're just duplicating so many of your campaigns or so many of your ad groups. And um, the problem is like now you have this data scarcity issue where let's say you want to split it out into 24 different hours, like going beyond like the, the metric issues, like you know inaccuracies on, on the data side. Sure. Um, you're splitting data across 24 different campaigns now, and you have to find a way to like map all that together to aggregate it, to get a meaningful data set for average performance. Like it now takes you 24 times as long uh, to get to like a material click threshold, conversion threshold, whatever, uh, when you're setting your bids sure. um, at the individual record level, which is how most software performs optimizations. Yeah. So it just creates like this really messy structure and like all kinds of timing issues and like data analysis issues, data scarcity issues. Yep. Yeah. So it was more in the implementation and just within the constraints that we had, which made day partying so ugly to implement. Because like Matt said, we'd have to split them apart into multiple different campaigns. And then using the API, we'd turn these campaigns on or off based off of different time periods throughout the day. And then at that point, now you've just got this data that's split between all these different campaigns too. Um, and so, you know, the, the main use we found before we now have this new data was just more on like very high volume items that had a ton of data coming in. Um, for those items, we could use day partying, but in general, it just got so messy that the cons kind of outweighed the benefits. Um, but now, since we're able to split apart the data on an hourly basis within the campaign, we don't have to separate them into individual campaigns and because the data is only by day. Um, now we're getting this like data feed that's almost real time coming to us um, that we can optimize based off of it. And so, you know, if you're listening to this and trying to figure out how you can implement it, there's a couple different ways that you could do. Um, first is, you know, we'll be posting these results. You can check them out on the website and everything too. Um, you can take a look at this and you can choose to either like use bulk files to ramp up bids during a certain time, or if there's more aggressive campaigns that you want to launch. I mean, you could even go in when you get in the office and turn them on and then turn them off later. Um, so there's nice manual processes that you can use. Um, if you're using software that allows you to schedule campaigns going on or off, like this could be another cool way to approach it. Um, personally, what we're doing is um, we're using our system that's called Ad Advanced Streamline. Um, it's our bidding system that it's constantly looking at the new data that's coming in. Um, we're using different machine learning models to be able to um, trend out where these key periods are and then adjust bidding up uh, for these golden hours when people are much more likely to convert and then cutting back bids during the periods where they're not. And so it's just this continuous bidding system that's taking all this data into account. Um, I know some people are hesitant with like machine learning models and different things like that. Um, there's many instances where they should not be used, but this is like the perfect instance to use those type of models. We have nice repeatable data coming in. It's a great pattern that we can use to predict future conversion rates and set bids off of that. And so overall, we're super excited about it. Think that it's going to have a huge impact to results. Definitely. Yeah. So I don't know, I guess any other key takeaways that you have or items that you want to cover with stream or any other updates? I mean, one cool feature too, that's coming out of this is, uh, and this, this feature released in the advertising API, um, open beta for the public, uh, before this episode launched, but something to check out and see if your tool provider offers or is utilizing it or, um, you know, if you have some sort of API access. Yeah, look into it. Uh, sure. it's, it's a budget utilization percent in real time. And so you don't have to wait for your campaign to run out of budget. You can check the status of budget utilization throughout the day. So you can see that your campaign's at 60% utilization, 80% utilization, um, to help you predict when it might run out of budget and predict the pacing too for better 
budget setting. Um, so okay. really valuable during like holidays, especially prime days coming up. Sure. Um, being able to pull real time budget utilizations, really nice during those holidays to make sure that you don't run out of budget um, before the end of the day, if you, if you have it available to spend. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And so we're currently still digging into Amazon marketing stream. So if we have other takeaways that we can share, we'll definitely be posting that as we go. Um, yeah, a lot more items that we're looking to update in our system just from this data and being able to utilize things like our ad advanced streamlined bidding system. Um, so lots of good stuff. Um, and even if you don't have access to these items, you can still manually do a lot of these moves through bulk updates or even going and turning on and off campaigns at certain times of the day. So definitely encourage you to check out the post on our website and you can see these different trends. We've shared our heat maps and all that good stuff on exactly what we're seeing for time of day. And we even split it out based off of the day of the week too. So I definitely encourage you to check that out. It's just with the results that we're seeing, uh, we feel like there could be some huge boost in performance if you can utilize it. So yeah, overall, um, hope you enjoyed this episode. Really appreciate you listening and hope you join us again on the next episode of the Ad Project Podcast. Okay.